Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone, and welcome to the Poetry Times. I'm Martin Gray. It's currently about a gazillion degrees here in the UK, but you'll be pleased to know that the bit of me that hasn't melted is delighted to bring you news on submissions, finance and poetry books. Coming up on the show today, our publisher of the week and a bit of finance news. But first, I've got for you a few submissions that caught my eye like a bee on a bike ride. And first up, Aesthetica magazine are inviting writers to submit their poems to their 15th Creative Writing Award for Poetry and Short Fiction. Entries cost £12 per poem, however the winner will receive £2,500 obsessed English pounds. There's also a lot of other prizes too, including publishing, sub subscriptions and mentoring. Entries are open to anybody from anywhere in the world until the 31st of August. Poems can be on any theme and unlike many competitions can be previously published, although they do need to be 40 lines or fewer in length. You can submit as many poems as you want. For full terms and conditions, do head over to aestheticamagazine.com. Next up, would you like your poem broadcast on BBC local radio in the UK? Thought you would. I've actually done this myself. In fact, I was on after Carly Rae Jepsen. And yes, I did have to Google Carly Rae Jepsen to find out who they were. See, I'm really uncool like that. I'm actually so uncool that I don't know if people still even say cool. Cool. Anyway, submissions are open to everybody based in their radio station's local area and stay open all year round. There is no specific theme, no specific length limit, also no fee, but also no payment. And the various local radio stations play uploaded content every day. They're not expecting something that's perfectly produced. So simply using your phone microphone will be fine. For full details and the entry form, head over to bbc.co.uk forward slash upload. Finally, on submissions for this week, heading over to South Pasadena in the USA and to the Film and Video Poetry Society, a non-profit with a mission to encourage poets to further their ongoing explorations within the fields of filmmaking, video, digital and media art. They are taking submissions until the 4th of September for their Film and Video Poetry Symposium. Films can be of any length, produced at any time, on any theme, and also in any language. So naturally, anybody from anywhere in the world can submit. Submissions cost $20 per video, and all accepted videos will be part of a 30-day exhibition and potentially brought up in workshops, screenings, and more during the festival. If you're interested, then there is a ton of information available at, at fvpsociety.com. Over to funding news now, and the UK-based Paul Hamlin Foundation's Ideas and Pioneers Fund is currently open. This fund provides grants of up to £15,000 to support people with a vision of a better society to explore their ideas for change. Their focus is on supporting ideas at the earliest stage of development, especially if your plan is risky or experimental. They say they are looking for potential and not the finished product. They also say they'd like most, but not all of the people they support, to be between 18 and 30 years old. If this sounds interesting to you, then you'll be pleased to know that there is no specific opening or closing date for this fund and that anybody can apply. They say they want to support everyone from activists to researchers, as long as you're focused on exploring an idea for change. If this makes your ideas light up, then you can find more information and full details at phf.org. UK. Just before I move on to the Poetry Publisher of the Week, I just need to wipe my brow. Told you, it's proper hot here. As a quick aside, UK houses are designed to stay warm, not stay cold. We really don't do well in heat waves. Anyway, on to our Poetry Publisher of the Week, which this week is... Broadside Lotus Press. Broadside Lotus Press are a USA-based publisher and a merging of two presses that spent decades providing a platform for Black and African writers, specifically Broadside Press, formed in 1965, and Lotus Press, formed in 1972. 
Their mission now is to provide processes, structures and literature to engender and support a literate, politically conscious, socially responsible community capable of giving a clear voice to the reality, experiences, needs and struggles of humanity. Instead of highlighting new releases, I am going to highlight three books that are still available for purchase and also important to their legacy. And first, we have a different image, the legacy of Broadside Press. This is a collection of work from six of Broadside Press's most influential poets from the 1960s and 1970s, specifically Gwendolyn Brooks, Etheridge Knight, Audrey Lorde, Haki Madhubuti, Dudley Randall and Sonia Sanchez, as well as essays that are present, present the political, cultural and aesthetic context of each poet's contributions to the black arts and black consciousness movements. A different image is, I quote, casting a new light on this exceedingly valuable literary tradition and articulates the connections between the poetry of the black consciousness era and today's flourishing performance poetry movement. It will acquaint contemporary poets and students with the literary goldmine of their broadside predecessors. And it also includes recordings of the poets themselves. This book was selected by the Library of Michigan as one of Michigan's notable books of 2005. First released in 2004, it is 288 pages, available for $24.95. Next, next up, we have Adam of Ife, Black Women in the Praise of Black Men. This book was first published in 2006 and is an anthology featuring positive poems about African-American men by 55 black female writers and traces the historical influences that have cast so many contemporary African-American men in a negative light. It is described as a unique and groundbreaking anthology. The insightful and informative introduction explains the historical reasons for the plight of many black men today. The poems show understanding, compassion and support. Adam Ife, Black Women in Praise of Black Men, is 234 pages long and is currently available for 18 US dollars. And finally, from Broadside Lotus Press, we have Booker T and Them, A Blues by Bill Harris, a bio poem originally released in 2012. It is described as the early 1900s were a dangerous time for African-American men, whether famous or nameless. Punishment from any perceived transgression against the Jim Crow power structure came swiftly in legislative, emotional or physical form, and it could well take one's life. Despite this reality, however, a number of African-Americans still lifted their heads, straightened their spines and spoke and acted against the mainstream. In Booker T and Them A Blues, poet and playwright, Bill Harris examines what he calls the age of Booker T, 1900 to 1915, when America began flexing its imperialist muscles, D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation was released, and Thomas Edison's many technological innovations set the tone for the United States to be viewed as the nation of the century. This book is a follow-up to 2009's Birth of a Notion, delving into American history by presenting evidence for a greater understanding of these men and the cultural forces that shaped them. It is 234 pages long and is available for $18.95. These books, as well as the rest of Broadside Lotus Press's extensive back catalogue, are available at broadsidelotuspress.org. And that is everything from me for this week. As ever, the links to everything covered today will be listed in the description below. And if you think that something should be featured on our show, then we would love to hear from you. Please drop us an email at poetryglobalnetwork at gmail.com or leave us a comment below. We have six shows per week here at the Poetry Global Network, as well as Bottoms Up, our fortnightly open mic. And I am here every Wednesday at 7 p.m. London time. If you like what we do here at PGN, then please do all that, like, subscribing, bell icon stuff, so that you don't miss anything. I've been Martin Gray, thank you for watching, I will continue dissolving, and if I don't completely dissolve, I will see you next week at 7pm London time. Keep on poeting, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.